Um, I have Jennifer and Maddie, who's joining us also today for the next half hour um, to talk about learning needs in the CCCM sector. And I see that she has posted a mentee link. There you go. Over to you, Jen and Maddie. Thanks, Caroline. I'm just going to read out my um, pre what I wrote in the chat, which was thanks for pointing out all the things that CCCM can do. And I think this day has really been about knowing more about um, the great work that CCCM practitioners are doing around the world. So with that, Maddie, I don't actually see you. Oh, sorry. Forgot there to, you are. Uh, turn my video on, but I'm here. Let's introduce ourselves. Okay, people who maybe know, don't know us. I can't believe that nobody would know us, but maybe there are some. <laughs> Um, I'm Maddie. I am the active CCCM Global Technical Coordinator, and I co-chair alongside Jen the Capacity Development Working Group. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Jennifer, and I work for IOM and also do some capacity building for the CCCM cluster. And we thought we'd take today to do the global annual learning needs assessment. And that is such a, a nice term to be um, saying learning needs assessment. I feel like all day long, if you've been on part of the sessions or some of the sessions you've been hearing about um, learning needs and capacity building, you know, HLP colleagues were just talking about, you know, more communities need to be informed about what their rights are. More camp management actors need to know about HLP. Um, you know, we heard this morning about, you know, the great work that Red R UK has been doing on training in the minimum standards, but we want to spend the next half an hour, um, Juan, as you said, going back to COVID days and doing a mentee. You can see that we've put the mentee link and code, which is get your phones. Here, here's mine. I'm going to have, I'm going to vote. I'm going to double vote. Um, so go to menti.com and type in code 76426011. And we're going to use this opportunity to talk about um, the ways in which you can shape priorities for capacity building in the next year ahead. Maddie, what have we forgotten to say about the global learning needs assessment that we're doing right now? It's a light touch. Tell it's us light more touch. About that. It's building on last year's global learning needs assessment. So many of you will remember that um, we sent around a survey last year um, and we had about 200 respondents, which was great. And it went into quite a lot of detail asking about um, areas to prioritize. So we didn't want to um, overwhelm and overburden you because we know you're very busy. Um, and we wanted to just kind of light touch update this this year. Um, I think we have a hand raised. Does that mean that there's a technical hitch? Please go ahead, whoever's raised your hand. It's Ali. I think it's fine. Okay. Well, please put any questions or concerns in the chat and we can try and, um, if you're not able to access it, we can try and um, support. So first question, um, just to kind of understand a little bit about you and a little bit about the um, split of where different people are um, working on, uh, the different contexts that people are joining from, the different work that you're doing, um, please can you tell us where do you currently work? This one should be relatively easy um, and hopefully remind you about how to use Menti. Um, but yeah, do shout if there's any issues. For those of you that may not be familiar with Menti, it is a um, web-based voting. And once you go to menti.com, they ask you to enter a code. And as you enter that code, you'll see the same question on your phone as is appearing on the screen. And so what you'll see on the screen is kind of the results in real time. So right now we see results coming in from where everyone's joining from the oh there is a global option one um oh you're no no you're right you're right there's no global option there's a global I feel option excluded 
no, no, there's a global <laughs> option on this. But Christian's coming up. But where you currently work, you know, just choose your favorite place. Choose the favorite country you're following right now. If if you have a global role, you can you can say all those countries. So lucky you. <laughs> Raquel, you I believe are joining from Brazil. And so you would sign you would sign into Latin America. I know it has the RV4 platform on there. So maybe you don't specifically work for the RV4 platform. Ah, great. Okay, good. So use the chat also to, to chat to us if you're having a question about where you should fill it in. Um, this will be a little bit more informal maybe than the other presentations. And you can hear a colleague trying to reach me right now. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let me quickly mute that colleague. Okay, so we have about 20 respondents so far, but I can see about we have 78, 78 who said that they joined online. The okay. So let's give them a minute to or two more. Maybe people are grabbing their phones. Maybe everybody's working at global level. And this is really the opportunity to maybe not in this slide, but in future slides to really have your say. Um, and we'll really set the direction of what the capacity development working group will be prioritizing over the next year. So it's really useful if you do join and if you do uh, participate in this mentee for us, um, because we will use these results. Great, I see lots of people joining from MENA. That must be because even if you're not working directly in CCCM, because we do have a question from that coming up next, please do take a chance to tell us where you're joining from or where you're currently working. So you have a chance to influence the results, even if you're not, everybody's multitasking. I know, Philippa, that, that does happen, but put down your email. I had to just mute a colleague. Oh, Ali, you're not hearing. Um, I hope you can read then because our questions are being projected onto the screen. Maddie, in lieu of time, I think we need to advance on and hopefully the next um, question will be apparent to people. And what we'd like to know with this second slide is um, if you're working indirectly or directly for displaced persons. And so um, this is where you get to have your global or regional differentiation made. Um, we really want you, if you're working directly at site level, to let us know. If you're working in a cluster coordinator role or a project manager role, um, we have made those indirect roles more apparent. If you're not working in CCCM sector, um, we know you miss us. You, we know you love us and you wish you were, but you can also have a vote there and, and tell us where you are. Um, there, thank you. So someone not working in CCCM, this is anonymous as Maddie reminded me that we don't, we don't know exactly who is voting for what. Um, we see a lot of program managers um, kind of leading the pack right now. So that's great. You'll know a lot about the work of your teams when we get a little bit deeper into the questions coming in. So um, thanks for telling us if you're working directly or indirectly with displaced people. Thank you, Zoom Africa. We will, um, in telling us that you're working in Somalia, um, if you weren't able to feed into the, to the Zoom question there, you can access that form by going to www.menti.com and the code is 76426011. Thanks Juan for putting us back in that. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to go to the next slide. So this question is trying to, again, understand a little bit more about you. 
and trying to understand the um, breakdown of the different perspectives that we're hearing from you. So as you'll see on your phones, each of these questions is a sliding scale. So if you um, are a legend and you have more than 10 years of experience, you can rank yourself as a five on that and a one on the others, and then um, it will kind of all even out basically. So, or if you're new to the sector, you can rank that highly and then rank the others um, low and share like that. So this just gives us a bit of an understanding of the general amounts of experience that people have within uh, who are on the call and who are answering these questions. Okay, great. So it seems a lot of people are kind of hovering around the experienced around five years, but who's counting um, option. Great to see that we've got some legends among us as well. And great to see that we've got some newbies and people who aren't working in CCCM. Um, we like to be inclusive here. Just a couple more seconds to get us over the 30. Okay, I will go to the next slide. So since we're really interested in what kind of capacity development you do through your role, whether it's direct or indirect, we'd like to understand how often you conduct training. And that doesn't mean that you need to conduct training um, as your only function, but if you would let us know if your um training pretty frequently maybe you know um as uh once a week or once a month that that's pretty um a, a regular occurrence for you um or if it's more of a sometimes occurrence you know that you do it like every three months or so um if it's sadly not applicable that you don't deliver any cccm training we also need to know that as well um but if you are having some type of capacity building that you are doing, um, we would really like to, to understand who's on the call and which kind of role you have in relationship to conducting CCCM training. So it seems like sometimes is leading out, ooh, it's rapidly changing as people vote. I'm glad to see that there's more trainers than not trainers on this call. Okay, I see the results kind of holding there, Maddie, if we wanna to go to the next slide. Okay. So now we wanna create a little bit of a word cloud um, and understand um, what else you would like us um, as the Global CCCM Capacity Development Working Group to focus on. So if you have like specific topics in mind, um, maybe it's something um, that we've spoken about earlier today. Maybe you want a specific training package on fire response, or maybe you want a specific package on anticipatory action. Um, then please um, let us know. Um, or as is um, coming up here with mentorship, is it a methodology? Like, is it a way of delivering training that you would want additional focus and support on? So I think there's the opportunity to write um, about three words on your, um, that comes up on the Mentimeter, but you can just write one. You can write, um, yeah, as you choose, whatever's most relevant to you. So great, we've got some coming through already. Um, dual solutions, localization, uh, mentorship, advocacy, TOTs is coming up. Um, these are great. These are also quite difficult to read in the color scheme. So apologies for those of us who are maybe kind of blind among here. Um, wow, localization and advocacy seem to be coming up slightly more frequently. Uh, cash for work, UDOC is coming up. Um, localization again, mentorship again. Great, community participation, risk mitigation, sharing knowledge. 
Okay, great. I will go to the next slide, but feel free to continue adding. So thinking about the kind of place where you're working right now, um, we're wondering within the CCCM training package that you have, what kind of technical reinforcement is needed? So you're going to have 100 points in this voting scheme, and you can put all of your 100 points in any of the topics that we've listed here, participation, site closure, area-based approaches, I wish we had known that HLP was gonna be such a big presentation, Maddie, before us, but um, you, you do have a chance to kind of fill things um, in that maybe aren't on our slide. So you can choose three, you can put 10 points in um, only one of the areas and you know 90 in another. So go ahead and vote and tell us what kind of technical reinforcement, what kind of training do you think really needs to happen in the place where you're working right now? Thinking about the types of presentations that we've had earlier today from, from certain regions, it wouldn't surprise me that um, the environment was coming up or um, anticipatory action just based on the presentation just coming from Caroline prior to us. So if you have something that's maybe not there that you think is important, um, you can go ahead and type that into the chat also. But I see right now that area-based approaches is really coming up as quite a strong um, and very happy to also see that minimum standards is also um, seen as, as a real need. Wish we had time to drill down and, and do our interviews about these types of topics. And some of you may, may be wondering about area-based approaches versus mobile CCCM. Um, in some operations, those are quite closely. Uh, oh no, Richard, you can definitely vote. Hi, <laughs> legend. You're definitely able to vote. Please join the voting. Juan, can you put back in the... Oh, the, I see that was a direct message to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but if anybody else is sending me a direct message and, and wants to be part of the voting, um, please write, write, Jen, I just wrote you, not everybody. But, okay, so I'm really happy to see that minimum standards is there. There is no right and wrong answer about this. This really is just based on where you think that the reinforcement is needed in the area where you're working. And we can advance to the next slide, Maddie, where we get more information about that. Okay, great. Um, so thinking about what you have just responded on there, we want to understand a little bit about what are the blockers or what are the impediments for doing uh, this kind of training on this topic in your context. Understanding that some of these blockers might be um, environmental and some of them might be more around kind of human resources and time management. Um, time management human resources and um yeah like i guess i'm what i'm trying to say by time management is more like having the actual time to carve out and to deliver these training sessions and kind of have these conversations um at uh in your country um i am not 100 percent sure how i see these answers I see that there are eight mm -hmm. answers, but I don't quite know what they it are. Says, it says you press enter to show answers. Oh, no, no, no. I was that was a uh, really a trick. So show, see who was paying attention. Thank you, one. Um, okay, so what are the some some of the blockages for doing trainings on these topics? Um, people are requesting more experienced trainers. Um, lack of trained trainers. Um, so that is a useful one for us to understand. Um, the authorities being one as well. Another thing that we were postulating might be an answer to this um, as we were developing this, but that's really useful to understand and kind of confirm our um, confirm our assumption there. Financial resources, financial resources, financial budget. Okay, that's very clear. Needing to be a trainer. Recognition. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it's about um, having the like having a certificate at the end of it or something along those lines or recognition that it makes 
Anyway, we can explore that in further detail. If you wrote recognition, please do get in touch. Um, human resources and financial resources need to learn from failures. That's a great one. I think that's really, really important. And I think the kind of um, humility and the sort of unsqueamishness to be like, okay, this didn't work that well. Um, let's learn from it is a really important one. And I've seen a couple as well on language barriers, which is, um, there's one here and there's one further down as well, which is definitely something that we are very cognizant of um, and hopefully something that we can um, look at going forwards. Coordination between private and public sectors. Interesting that would be a blocker. Also would like to know more about that. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next slide. But please keep filling in if you have, uh, if, you, if you're kind of halfway through your answer, continue it and you can submit and then go on to the next question. So our next question is um, the ways in which we can reinforce training in the context where you're working. And a lot of you already kind of put in those answers in that open, open um, word source, but this would give us from a scales standpoint, where you would place the uh, the blockages that you're facing um, on a kind of technical reinforcement related to training skills only. So if you were talking about financial resources, that's that's kind of a part. But if you're a trainer or if you're somebody that has trainers around you, um, this would be a way in which you could kind of talk about or share with us the ways in which you think technical skills need reinforcement in the context where you're working. When we look at these um, scales, it's always interesting to not just look at the number result, but kind of where the arc is. So um, I see a lot of people placing emphasis on um, trainer or trainers and that was something that was coming up in the last um the, the last slide as well but certainly the adaptation and skilled trainers um people who have facilitation skills who really know how to do active listening seem to be the the highest trend issues here and um that's that's super interesting and we really appreciate your your kind of reflection on that and how that's um impacting your ability to actually kind of impact the, the way in which you're, the environment in which you're training in. So maybe let's advance to the next slide, Maddie. Okay, so this is a fun one. Um, which new topics do you think need to be developed? So again, in this one, we're using the same kind of sliding scale. Um, and this is the kind of wish list, right? I mean, it's not a wish list, it's a prioritization. Um, so if you can tell us out from these um, topics, which you think need to be prioritized. So we have advanced level site planning, um, we have evacuations, which are kind of linked to the MEND uh, guidelines. We have durable solutions linked to the action agenda. Um, we have environment related to CCM. This is going to get difficult now that things have started moving around. Um, we have cluster coordination, engagement with authorities, um, urban settings, potentially going kind of in a different, um, taking different approaches than the UDOC, which is obviously a really relevant resource still, um, and the inclusion of persons with disabilities. I think that is the eight that I've said. Um, so if you can, again, rank these um, as you are doing. Um, and tell us what is most important to you. Durable Solutions is coming out top at the moment, which looks um, like Durable Solutions and Environment and Site Planning and Engagement with Authorities, I think, are the um, looking at the top at the moment. But let's see. Quite okay. a lot of movement in this list. Yeah. Every time somebody else votes, it changes quite substantially, hey? Yeah, we've see, I see that 26 people have responded to this. But Durable Solutions does seem to remain as the top one, so that's very interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting. Okay, I'm going to move this up now, um, but thank you for that. So this is going to be the most fun voting that you're going to do uh, today. So this is a two by two axis axle 
And what we're going to do is we have the, the topics there, and we're going to ask you to reflect on if it's guidance that needed or if it's training that's needed. And so using a kind of scale approach, you're going to be able to see each of these topics and see if you need to, if it's guidance that you think is really needed about durable solutions and the action agenda, for example, or if it's actual like in-depth training. Um, so go ahead and, and take a minute to reflect and then you'll be able to move your scale and then we'll be able to see um, how you rank and prioritize those, those different topics. Um, I see a couple people have to leave. We're, we're running a tiny bit over, um, over time, but if you'll bear with us, we have three more slides and we feel like this is really important to kind of get broad level um, input on. So I see quite a number of topics coming in on the guidance side and um, topics like engagement with authorities, maintaining kind of a top position, um, maybe along with the inclusion of persons with disabilities on the training side. So if you can think about the ways in which you personally think that the environment where you're working can be impacted and can be changed. Um, please do consider how you want to um, prioritize these, um, these issues and think through how the CCTM cluster and the capacity development working group can support you in these areas. So number one is coming up uh, with advanced site planning, which is, which is really interesting. Um, that is an area that we touch upon, of course, with uh, with shelter cluster, um, but we would want to make sure that CCTM knew those um, those topics as well. And I think the presentation earlier by Brian was was so interesting um, about the site mapping, and that really shows um, kind of advances in technology and in ways in which um, camp management can can show that value for for money. And indeed. Um, I see that 25 people have answered this and that's about the, the range that we're getting, Maddie. So thank you for those of you that answered that more difficult question. Okay, great. Um, and for this one, I mean, languages was mentioned earlier as um, one of the kind of blockers for things to not be, for materials maybe are not translated. Um, so please, again, another word cloud and Arabic and French are already starting to come up. Um, just let us know which um, other languages. Um, so we already have the training materials in English, French, I want to say Spanish, we have them in Spanish, um, and Arabic, um, and Ukrainian, I believe. Um, I believe Turkish translations are in process. Um, what other languages other than the kind of the standard um, kind of training languages that we have, would you like us to prioritize? Which ones are we missing, essentially? Kiswahili, okay, great. They are in Thai, Juan, you translated them. And and I and I do um, really appreciate the the kind of um, chat that's going on about that the technical words are very hard to translate and I and I couldn't agree more. I think even words that are not um, hum, technical words are sometimes very hard to translate. And so coming up with simple words and simple um, ways to to have translations is one of the most um, difficult things. So I see Hausa, um, simple, simple languages, simple English, um, Swahili, great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. So for, as our second to the last question, what I would, what we would like to ask is another hundred points question. And the, the ways that you think that the global cluster should provide learning opportunities. And learning opportunities um, during COVID were really different than the learning opportunities that are existing now. 
we have a long standing dream list of ways in which we think the global cluster should be involved. Um, but from a from a learning and capacity development standpoint, it would be really great to hear from you from your position, of course, and thinking about your organization and not just yourself, thinking about the way in which you engage as a cluster coordinator, the ways in which you engage as a um, as a person who's building the capacity of people working directly or indirectly, what are the what are the ways in which we need to to help the cluster to prioritize those learning opportunities? I see e-learning is is uh, is winning, but it's closely followed by every other option. Um, training of trainers was on top for a few minutes there, and then jumped jumped below. Um, cluster coordinator training is something that's um, often talked about and um, has not been, oh no, now it's falling. As I mentioned, cluster coordinator training, it's falling. Um, so right now you'll know that the e-learning is a little bit outdated e-learning of TOTs, that's not going to happen. You got you to gotta train people in front of you to be able to learn how to train human beings. Um, some things that are not mentioned here, really, I really appreciate that. Um, could you just type either privately to Maddie or myself some things that you don't think are mentioned that you, or if you feel comfortable typing it in the, in the whole group? That would be really nice if you could. Okay, excellent. Um, thanks for your feedback on that. I will shift to the last slide. So this is our last kind of question for you. This is your opportunity to have the last word. Um, again, this is another, um, it's not, well, it is a word cloud, but you can enter more than one word if that's useful. What we wanna understand from you is how the global CCCM cluster capacity development working group can support more inclusive learning. And so what haven't we thought about? What haven't we asked you about? What are we not focusing on? How can we make this more inclusive? And this might be more inclusive in terms of the language piece that we've spoken about at length. It might be more inclusive in terms of making some of our training materials more accessible in other ways. Um, it might be more inclusive in terms of the populations that we talk about in our trainings. We, we already do try and make them as inclusive. Uh, we already do try and make them really inclusive. But is there something that you see is missing and you would want to um, integrate it or include it um, in other materials going forwards? So please let us know. Um, OK, great. So we have some coming through. Uh, local NGO support training for local NGOs. I think that's and localization. I think this is all really this is a really important um, component that I guess we haven't necessarily um, explicitly put as a topic, but I think would be sort of mainstreamed throughout the work that we're doing to make sure that all of the resources that we're developing are um, translatable and kind of make sense for um, local actors. Um, simplification, mentorship for trainers, local organizations, um, having trainers. I mean, a lot of these, oh, private sector inclusion. That's very interesting. Hmm. I think a lot of these say sort of similar things, which is really important and really relevant for us. What we'll do is again, we'll use this data um to shape our priorities in the coming um in the coming year sorry i'm really struggling to see on the on this uh color scheme and i think i'm discovering that i'm colorblind more simple <laughs> translations um not the moment to discover it i know uh reflecting community feedback that's a really interesting one and how we can ensure that that is um reflected through our training and through our um through the capacity strengthening sessions that we deliver, making sure that the community voices are um, heard loudly within that. Okay, great. I think this is, I think, oh, bad 
practices, lessons on bad practices. Again, linking back to what we were saying earlier about the kind of learning from our mistakes and um, being honest with ourselves about what hasn't necessarily worked that well. I think that's a really important one as well. Area-based responses, durable solutions. I mean, that's great that this is kind of, if this is your priority, it's great that this is something that we're already sort of trying to think about. Um, okay, great. Thank you very much for your participation, everybody. You can, this, um, I'll leave it open for now so you can kind of keep thinking about what your last word will be. Um, but in the interest of time and knowing that we've already run over, I will um, stop sharing my screen and say thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, both, um, for this session. Um, and I think it's, it's great to see the engagement and the suggestions as well. I think work around capacity building, capacity development continue to be one of the key kind of priority for, for the sector. And, and I think it's great to see how, like, you know, that, that we're able to invest more dedicated, like, effort in, into it as well. 